Welcome to Sacred Sessions, light-filled, uplifting and informative conversations for people on their spiritual path. Join me, Melissa Matthews. And me, Alison Filler here, each week as we openly share our personal experiences and wisdom on life, love and spirituality in the modern world. Hi everyone, how are you today? Welcome to another episode of Sacred Sessions. I'm Alison and I'm here with my beautiful co-host, Melissa Matthews. Hi Mel, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Alison? I'm really great. Everybody? (laughs) Hi. (laughs) (laughs) Well, this week we have a brilliant topic that we've been guided to talk about and share with everybody. And this week's topic is all about ascension. This has been um, something that you might have already been hearing about or heard about. Maybe you already know a little bit about it. But Melissa and I felt like it would be a really great topic to talk about this week and break down into layman's terms maybe a little bit more or into simple terms what ascension means. Things like what is it, what does it mean. Um, We're going to share our own personal experiences with it as well and how this has been affecting us and our journey and our life. I also want to del- talk a little bit about, you might have heard the um, words three dimension, the third dimension, fourth dimension, fifth dimension. We're moving into, you know, this 5D earth, you know, we've been in the 3D earth. What does all that mean? And also a really important part of it is the signs and symptoms of ascension that you may have been experiencing along the way, both um, physically, emotionally, mentally, energetically, and spiritually, all these signs and symptoms that you may have been going through for the last little while, even the last few years, which I normally call it being shaken to be awakened. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna discuss some of those things as well. So, what do you think, Melissa? Well, uh, ascension is to me, it is the integration of of our spirit into our human life, and that means leading from what what you yourself, Alison, call the heart space. I call it from a place of kindness and a place of fairness and a, a place of being reasonable, but using our spiritual abilities because they are our abilities to guide us in our everyday life. And it is in, for, for all intents and purposes, ascension is being the best version of yourself you can be in that moment. Not looking back on what you were, not looking forward on who you want to be, but right there in that moment and being aware of who you are, what you're doing in the world. Mm-hmm. the decisions that you make because it impacts into the world, you know, but also understanding that you are doing the best that you can, but, you know, like, so not being too hard on yourself. So there's a, a there's a range of, of that. It's also called raising your vibration. There's a the fifth dimension, you know, that some, some of you may have heard about, but essentially it's, it's unlocking and demystifying this connection that we have so that, everyone understands that they do have this access to these spiritual realms. They do have access to angels and guides, their own angel, angels and guides. So that's that's sort of like what, what it means to me. I was mystified about this whole concept. I really didn't understand because, as you know, a lot of my communications are um, like angelic. And so I'm not really aware of a lot of hum- human terms. But mm-hmm. I do know that it it basically comes down to, for me, like personal development and being the best version of myself that I can be. And mm-hmm. when I'm happy and when I'm calm, that is like my vibration or my um, my sense of being is heightened. Mm-hmm. If I was to do things that were um, not kind to myself or kind to others, that uh, lowers that vibration or that light within me. Mm-hmm. And so that's how I look at it. Is that, am I on the right track here? Alison? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think what I'd like to add to it a little bit is some of the um, actually describing a little bit more of what I've learned along the way from um, my own experiences and also from other spiritual teachers out there. 
And so what I, what, what, um, this ascension means is that basically it's been predicted by quite a few people over, you know, the centuries, um, the, you know, that around this time there was going to be this new age, this new light hitting the earth. And it, oh, that just gave me goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be the age of light. You know, you've heard of people talking about the age of Aquarius, the age of um, different things, but this is when an increase of light, pure light and love was going to hit the planet. And it started to come through um, in the 70s and 80s. But, I mean, basically what I've learn is around 2008, this influx from three-dimensional earth started to ascend, all this light started pouring into the earth. And as it poured into the earth, it also started pouring into our light bodies. But so many of us were just unaware of this. And um, by 2012, this is when, you know, people were predicting the Mayan calendar, end of the earth and end of, you know, the fear of the end of the world and all these things. But what that actually, from what my understanding is, is that it's basically the end of the earth as we knew it. We were transitioning and ascending from the th third dimension into the fourth dimension. And oh my goodness, this is where it like, Instantly, so many people, and I'll tell you, I'll share my journey as well with this, instantly had access to the fourth dimension and we all became very empathic. We all had now our consciousness, our own consciousness now had access to the fourth dimension, which is um, the astral plane, the astral room. And many, many of us, this is when we all became so, um, we were able to connect to the spirit realm, to, you know, mediumship, all these things started to really open up on the planet around 2012. We're starting, more and more people were starting to see their loved ones who'd passed over. They were starting to, to see, feel, and know energetic changes within their body. They were starting to be more aware. And of course, you know, if we really want to understand like that, let's, let's have a look at our children or the children of today who who were born and they, they carry this light naturally within them, but they are different. They think differently. They're advocates. These are what we call crystal rainbow children, um, mm. you know, and they, they hold this particular frequency. So they don't actually need to do anything because they're holding that frequency, but they, they started to question. And from that, adults started to question some, are still like, you know, in that way of how we grew up, which was, look, you, you, you know, that's just a bit Lulu or a bit out there. And some, you do have to be a little bit careful about that. But, but my point is, is that people did start to open up. They started to question, they started to question, um, the ethics, their, their moral code, their inner compass. That mm. would be the, the, for me, the easiest way to understand it. And people, you know, that come to me that, and they say, look, I've known about this all my life, but it really started to heighten. I started to having more vivid dreams. So basically they're living, they're becoming more consciously aware of these other dimensions or even just the thought and the possibility there. It, they might consider it to be like, um, fantasy or something like that. But in fact, um, it is actually all coming together. So someone like me might say that they've got their foot in both worlds. And I just say, look, I'm just here where I am now. And I've got access to all of that as I choose. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, you, a way that it's been explained to me is that if you can imagine, um, we are a tube of light and we have our connection to source energy that is also going into the ground. This is this, this is sometimes called the silver light line. And, our consciousness is like a little ball of light going up and down this tube of light within us. And if you look at the chakra system, this consciousness ball of light that was, that was, um, is ascending throughout us only had access to the first three, um, chakras or levels of this light line, which Marissa Morris, um, a brilliant spiritual teacher 
calls um, the soul house. So first dimension is the physical room, second dimension is the emotional room, and the third dimension, the third layer of the soul house is the mental room. And they were the only um, rooms that we consciously had access to before this light started pouring in and... 2012, we were able to then shift into the fourth dimension, which brought us into have our consciousness elevated within ourselves to have access to the astral room. And that's where we all of a sudden, and this is, this is, was really scary to some people. And I know 2012 is actually when I first had my visitation from my father. You know, and mm. when I was working in practice, all of a sudden I had all these clients coming to me talking about the death of this person and death of that person. So when I heard, you know, it wasn't until a couple of years ago that I kind of heard <sighs> about all this. Well, oh, my goodness, it just makes so much sense. I was intuitively feeling and sensing all my client stuff because we all became so empathic. We're not only just now more able to connect to our own stuff, but we instantly can feel and sense everybody else's stuff around us as well. And that's been really challenging for so many people and especially children. So people are either being thrown into this world of self-development, spiritual development and learning everything they can. But for some people, they're trying to deal with it by numbing it or avoiding it or, um, you know, they can numb it all down which is you know that's something else that we'll talk about so it's interesting because in 2008 is when I start I mean I started my um 2007 going to 2000 is when I started my holistic kinesiology diploma so I had been suffering chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia for like six years up until then and then all of a sudden I started to like become connected to this world of healing natural therapy. So when I look back, it's like, oh, my goodness, I was just receiving this new whole influx of light that was, you know, no wonder we call ourselves light workers because many of us who have been awakening, being shaken to be awakened for the last five, ten years, you know, we are here to be the awakening souls and the light workers. So... Mm. Has that they're been part called, of your experience? Yeah, they're also called change makers, way showers, um, and and these and these people that we're talking about, you know, which can be anybody. Let me be clear, like yeah. my understanding of this and my experience of this, it can be anybody, and they can be in the corporate arena, they can mm -hmm. be in multinationals, they can be. Um, they can be anywhere. They can even be in a road at a, at a remote roadhouse in New South Wales because I met one there, and mm -hmm. and I went in there and it was just so filled with light. I was so welcome, and this is what I mean. Like these people are everywhere, and they may not know that they're holding this light or this frequency. They may not know that, but what they are doing is they are kind and they are having an impact on people. They're the advocates. These are the the healers, not just in alternative or what we call alternative health, but, you know, but in um, everyday health as well. And so, you know, there is this opening, there is an awareness and a lot of um, what we call, uh, a lot of these um, light workers, particularly, they have actually gone on to understand the structures with of earth through, um, you know, the corporate world and through the health world and through education, etc., so that then they can make those changes when those time comes because they're already in it. They understand how to use it and they understand how to have the influence to bring it through now. These are the change makers and the way showers. And whether they know it or not, it does not matter. Yeah. It does not matter. Like, because they are, they are doing what they need to do just by being themselves, just by connecting into what they feel is right and how they feel they can make a difference. And they will, they will make things happen. These are the people that make things happen. These are the people that, you know, that we, that we look to naturally and we, we may admire as well. Yeah. yeah. There's something about them that, that would be the easiest way for, for that or the most. Uh, you know, the most recognizable way for people to understand that as well. But this light, this light is the key thing because it is God, it is source, and it is coming into earth at this time because we 
have free will here on earth. We decide. And so that's why we, we choose to welcome it. We choose to, we choose to be led by it. Um, because that's how it comes into earth as well. Yeah. Because th- those realms yeah. cannot interfere because we have free will. We have to invite that in. But mm. it, I don't know about you, but it hasn't always been comfortable or an easy process. So, um, no, it as really this hasn't. Light comes in. <laughs> As this light comes in, and you know, we're not even aware of us. Us poor little humans, we're running around down on earth, and all of a sudden, you know, there's been an energy upgrade or more light, you know, we, you know, and what this does is as this light comes in, anything within you that is not of the light, any unconscious belief systems or toxins in your body or ways that are no no longer serving you for your highest good ways of behaving or you know if you you know eating your lifestyle relationship difficulties starts to absolutely come up and can really rock you it can be really challenging but if you know to keep this awareness in mind that i you know only of the light will prevail and that this is happening for you not to you, but for you. And that's why, you know, I've just lo- find sacred space and meditation and tuning into the light and the love just has, is the only thing that's really helped me to transition, just keep transitioning. But it hasn't been easy because, you know, many people are, are feeling very physical effects, very physical symptoms. They get, you know, they can be getting very sick and having, fatigue and um, um, body aches and rashes breaking out in their body as toxins and chemicals or things in their body are coming out and needing to be healing. People are, are, you know, they struggle, are struggling with depression or anxiety, you know, so we get real emotional um, stuff happening. And one thing in particular that as well starts started happening after around 2012 is I started having panic attacks. All of a sudden, out of the blue, I, the first one, I was at a music festival with my family and all of a sudden I just had this massive panic attack because I had all these people around me and I had to go running out to this clear space in this place because I've never had a panic attack. I have panic no. attacks in tunnels now, in elevators, all these things. So... There's lots of Is things that Is that because you could feel their happen? energy? Because as an empath, you've spoken before about how you can feel their energy or their vibration or just what you know, my husband calls the vibe, <laughs> the vibe of the situation. Is that because you could feel that and it was really overwhelming? Because some people yeah. will resonate with that as well. It's just a clear thing. I'm not happy here. You know what? And my body is, um, my body's showing me, you know what? I'm not, you're not happy here. So it comes out physically. I'm not happy here. This is what happens. Yeah. Or you're picking up on the people around you who are either on drugs or doing alcohol or the music or their energy that they're not happy or it was yeah. just, you know, it's those kind of things have, mm. you know, really happened. So people might be experiencing those kind of things, all sorts of, all sorts of things, you know, relationship breakdowns, you know, jobs and career breakdowns that are no longer serving you for your highest good you know and it can be very challenging because we don't like to change we don't you know we're creatures of habit we're more comfortable staying in our comfort zone yeah if we can um but (laughs) this is what's been happening well you know thankfully for me it's been a slow it's been a little bit slower (laughs) than that and um, i'm kind of used to it (laughs) i was kind of you know, I was used to a lot and I knew a lot and I knew about the changes, but I never knew the words that humans would use. <laughs> like, um, but I did, but what I do know is this, is that, um, I knew that for myself, for as even from a very young child, there were things that I knew. And one of them was that, num- um, there will come a time in my life that I will be going out and helping people and I will be able to speak openly about what I know and what I do and it will help people. And number two, that, um, that it will, that the children were so important. 
This mm. was the thing that was always the children, the children, the children. And that's because they will take the next generation and the next generation in as well. And so, you know, they'll, they'll start to become more of who they want to be rather than, I suppose, conforming. Like they'll ask questions and they'll work, they'll, they'll work around things and still use manners and structure and things like that as well. But they'll become really savvy and they'll use the system to change things so that the earth runs a lot better. It's more harmonious. And, um, you know, so there were those sorts of things that, that, you know, that came into my mind, but also that there would be a change in, in health, not only of people, but also of the planet Earth as well. And that yeah. en- the energy that I see, because I'm an extra sensory and I see vibration, I see energy um, in, in everything, in absolutely everything. Um, um, and so I was shown that it, that it would change and it would, the vibe of the situation, as my husband calls it, would actually become more harmonious for everybody yeah so there'd be a sense of ease and that also means that what we now see as um there's um there's structures within um and within large um industries like heavy industries and things like that as well it would become more balanced so that there wasn't an abuse because Mm. we can we have free will on this earth but at what point do we do we realize that actually that's not right or I choose not to do that. And so because we will become as human beings more aware of what we're doing in our everyday life and saying no to buying certain products, over time that will also uh, decide where the market goes and how they market, how they package and how they um, and how they provide their yeah. services and goods and it does take time but but this is one of the major factors as well as why it's so important um for human beings to be aware to raise their vibration to what to raise their um their mindset yeah and to be aware of their thoughts and what is not helping them and changing Absolutely. the way that their belief systems and but in fact it's not changing their belief systems it's actually expressing what is their belief system that is the key here Very, because a lot yeah. of people see unfairness yeah yeah so Absolutely. that that is um such an important point to make that um <clears throat> to keep raising your vibration you know on a daily level and check and um is so is so important and um, and with the children that you're talking about, the children, you know, I I just know as well with my own children and many of the children that I see as as clients and my you know friends' children, they just can't tolerate chemicals and toxins and you know all these things, and they're breaking, they're having allergies, they're having all these things, and it is to wake us up and to help us to like change the way we produce things and make things and make things more cleaner and you know natural and and all those kind of things so um it's really important for parents i also know that it's important it's important not to feel that the world is overwhelmingly bad that everything is going to rubbish you know because it's also important to see like the good things have already that have already started to oh, to be um, changed, you know. And I know myself, like, oh, like, like, oh, I can just go into a pit of desolation when I look at some things. But I stick with what my purpose is. I stick with that, and I encourage others to do that as well. But um, because that's what's important to them, that's where they're making their changes as well. So, um, you know, so I support others in how they do it and how they express it. Um, but. I, I know that I must stay also on what my purpose and what my path is and allow them, you know, to, to, to express their, their path as well. So, um, otherwise, you know, I could just, you know, fall into a pit of despair there because, you know, I could really, um, I could just see the ill in the world. <laughs> Whereas in yeah. fact, I see a lot of beauty on a day to day basis. I see a lot of beauty and I see a lot of beautiful people. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But I think with with the, with children these days, you know, if they're, um, I can only speak from personal experience as well. I know with my daughters, especially my youngest, um, she just didn't like the way structures were for kids, no. you know, <laughs> like school. She just used to say to me from a very young age, 
why do we have to go to school? Like, I just don't understand why we need to go to school. There's nothing, it's, you know, like she just, um, you know, the way they did things, the Good way they harped on about that, you know, it's just like, it's, and it's hard and it can make kids depressed because yeah. this is another thing I really wanted to talk about is that depression and anxiety is so prevalent in, you know, these days. And it is because we have access to these higher, you know, these empathic, we are so empathic now. And a lot of the kids that, you know, they're carrying and feeling their parents' stuff, you know, a, many, many things, really important for us parents to clean up our own stuff because it is impacting our children. It didn't used to 20, 30 years ago. And this is what, you know, I often talk about with my friends and with you, you know, the old way of doing things just no longer works. Like our parents were, they didn't worry about this kind of stuff because they didn't actually have that, you know, they weren't in that, yeah. we weren't in that energy field back then. Yeah. Everything's so much, it is different now. And, yeah. um, and yeah, that's ascension for you. That's right. I, like, I was pretty lucky. Like, my mum is um, very understanding of me and my mum has, like, a lot of the abilities that I have. So I was pretty fortunate. Um, and even yesterday, you know, I had conversation with her and I was saying, you know, and then this happened and this happened. And she's just so excited for me because she understands, like, what I'm here to do. And that's a really wonderful thing to have that support that's as well. Yeah. Look, it, it really is to have someone to speak with and, you know, but but – but we're quite a like you know it's it's pr that sort of um uh, you know about the young ones you know that runs in my family as well like they question everything and they they have a sense of advocacy a sense of fairness you know and it's actually i actually like admire the spirit of it i'll be honest with you <laughs> but you know sometimes you know uh we need to sh you know i found in my own experience you know you need to kind of show them like how they can that can best be served rather than jumping up and down about it okay so let's you want to really do something about it? let's figure out how we can do something about it. how can you make uh, make people aware of it and how can you um, get them to listen to you in a fair way instead of jumping up and down and turning them away because they're thinking oh my god <laughs> you're just too much <laughs> but yeah so there's also um, that assistance you know that can be given by any parent caregiver um, or you know teachers etc to show these young ones you know how they can make a difference and how they can um, you know, actually, you know, get an action plan of sorts or even just a way in which art to articulate, you know, what their purpose and their passion is to, mm. you know, if they want to change something, you know, like use the earth systems to do it. <laughs> Absolutely. You yeah. know, all I can hear is like, you know, it sounds like, you know, it was your mum was wonderful. All I can hear in my head is my mum. God bless you, mum. I love you. Is oh, that's not practical. That's not realistic. <laughs> and, um... I still heard that. I still heard that. Like, let's be honest. I still heard that. And, you know, but I had this, oh, just even now, like, I can't. Actually, I've worked on it in the last couple of years, just even thinking about my mother looking at me and giving me the look like I'm not doing the right thing <laughs> or that that comment's not right or something like that. It's just, uh, I just, just to feel it so badly. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> But yeah, so. Well, the thing is, is that we have now access to our soul. Like this we is do. the ascension process that's happening after the fourth dimension. The fifth dimension is in the soul house. From what I understand, it, that is when we really now have access to our soul. Mm -hmm. And um, and as we keep ascending, we're we're bringing in more frequencies, more energy, and more ability to connect to beyond that. Mm -hmm. to really go beyond that. But, you know, our parents and, you know, before this, we didn't have, they didn't have conscious, really conscious awareness of our soul and even that was important at all. So that's where people are using, you know, saying a lot of the time, what's for your highest good? What what does your soul want you to be doing? And what could you do for, if you if you could do anything, What what would you do? How, you yeah. know, how would you, how would you be? And so that's, you know, that's a really important question for anyone to ask themselves, you know. Absolutely. And these questions are probably, they're, they're new age questions, aren't yeah. they? They're new and, age questions. And what comes naturally to a person? Because that is also a key thing. What comes naturally to a person? Because that is like their personal gift, their, their uniqueness. And so, you know, that would generally also be 
what makes them happy. So how can Mm. they use that ability? And if someone has a particular trait and maybe they've used it in a way that hasn't been, you know, for the highest good of themselves or for others, you know, they can turn that, they can turn that around and use it in a way to actually show others as well. Like, look, you know, um, you know, this is, you know, maybe we can think about things in this way as well. I know a lot of people on the public speaking circuit, you know, go and speak about their uh, challenges. And so that, you know, there's great ways, you know, to, to look at it like that. So I'm trying to make it so that people understand because some people that listen are not, um, are not aware of this concept. And so I'm, I am quite aware of that. And my guides are really aware of that as well. And that's what they say. Well, you know, Melissa, you make it very practical. And so does Alison. So it, um, there might be certain terms that people haven't heard. And then there's other terms that they will have heard or concepts. And so, you know, it all fits in together. Yeah. So there you go. So what else have you got to add? I know that you've got a few things in there. So, well, I I just thought we would, um, like we've talked a little bit about, um, the challenges and the signs and symptoms. So I just want to break it down again. And then I really want, I think we should just share our, maybe our favorite or top ways of, um, embracing this or sure. working with this and turn it around and to give some positive tips. So again, you know, if you can, I think it's just important to remember that ascension is just this age of light that is hitting the earth and the more light, oh God, just gives me goosebumps. Every time I say that. <laughs> They're cheering you on there, Alison. <laughs> It's just, a, yeah, the more this light comes in from from God and from love, pure source energy, the more it's triggering us and it's bringing, it's raising our energy and vibration and it can be bringing up anything that's toxic or dark within us, within our physical body, our mental body, our emotional body, our energetic bodies. It's basically just getting it all up and it can be hard to realize the symptoms that you're going through is part of this, you know, so you can go and see doctors or therapists or chiropractors or those, but which is great to get that support. But just keeping in mind that this is shaking you to awakening you. And what is it that you may have been pushing the snooze button on? What is it that you may have been avoiding dealing with, avoiding changing. Maybe it's your diet. Maybe you've been getting these messages all the time to eat healthier, exercise more, drink more water, drink less, you know, alcohol or, you know, this and that. This ascension is working for you. So, um, have you not been having more enough time out in nature? Have you been stuck inside too much with your head down on the computer? This is now what you can be more aware of. Um, so, so, um, what have you found works best for you when these things start to come up for you? Well, because I'm so perfect and fabulous, they just don't know they do. <laughs> I start to feel, I start to feel off kilter, what we would call like off kilter or, um, I just don't feel right. You know, so that's, that's the easiest. I feel it physically and I just feel like a sense of overwhelm or responsibility or almost like I need to step back from everything. So that's how it feels for me with regards to what I do. I remember one night, um, and this, this was many, many years ago and I, I was still getting over the effects of, um, the um cancer treatment so this is this had been going on for a few years and i had um a a lot of difficulties but i remember laying in bed one night and and it was this this very clear message just say just say what you're thankful for it doesn't have to be for um for yourself because you know you're, you're pretty low but maybe you're thankful for what you can see the joy in other people and so it started like that so every night as i was going off to sleep i would consciously think about some happy things or some good things and it could have been anything but that was like a really key component 
of that because it actually started to ignite that spark back in me again because I was con I was being conscious and aware of things that I loved around me and so that helped to to do that as well that um meditation but also chakra work chakras are um for um people it is um these energy centers within our body and so I started working with those as well and um and as time went on and I be and I started to um so when I work energetically with people as well I do it's a the complete shark like what I'm shown in my own way through my own guides they've shown me like a chakra system to work with and that's what we work with and that makes a very big difference I have a lot of sleep I have a lot of downtime I um I make sure that if I feel unwell or if I just feel something's not right I will go and do that meditation and I'll do my shark work but I also invite my um, guides my angels and guides to come in because they do a particular um, process and that helps me as well but I, I I say show me what am I missing and that has helped me to deal with quite a lot actually and it's very very efficient because <laughs> I, I like being efficient um, but yeah I've been more um, it's actually led me to be more aware about my abilities my limitations my focus and so these are the things that, that I've become more aware of and I've become more aware of being a healthy happy person who understands like how to live well in the world yeah so I hope that that answered your question <laughs> yeah but, but yeah uh, and another thing like I see um I the way that I see it too sometimes I just feel really really weary particularly around maybe mid-afternoon or something like that and I'll go and lay down be for about half an hour an hour I won't go to sleep because of that light that frequency that we're talking about coming through that comes through so as I lay down um, I see it as like flashes of light and I thought it was like a neurological event or something like that but now I've become really aware when when people are talking about high energy time and a lot of frequencies coming into the earth I see that and I see it with the naked eye so there's a lot of things that I myself see that others maybe don't or maybe they experience it in a different way but but it is very clear to me and is very very real to me about this change in earth this new age this age of Aquarius I do see it and I see the changes that are happening because of it and they're positive so knowing when to go and um, meditate and take time out that's that's made a huge time difference for me mm. oh that's so good that's so good mm. um I just when I think for myself as well you know one of the things that just healed me out of everything and this is why it was hard to explain to people why um I just loved lying on the lounge or on the bed and just receiving this light energy and this started you know eight ten years ten years ago and I didn't have the conscious awareness of what all this was to the extent I do today but for whatever reason just lying on the lounge, completely switching off and just allowing this energy of the angelic light or this, this light and love to flow down around me just is what healed me and instantly helped revive my energy, my health and everything. And all I had to do when I do this with my clients, when I do this work with them is just, just allow and receive, just allow and receive and let the light and love in. And I'm, I do that every day. I just work on my comfortability with letting love in and allowing and breathing and receiving and just saying thank you thank you thank you and just keep letting it in letting it in because I know that very quickly our energy field can be contracted again you know when we're busy or we've got stuff to do or there's stuff going on around us our energy field can contract again sometimes our our chakras shut shut down and we're we need to work on opening them up again and letting that light in and, and restoring our energy field, our nervous system and, and things like that. You know, my diet's changed. You know, I've always loved healthy eating, but you know, people with food intolerances and all these kind of things, like I love eating high vibrational food and people have 
teased me for it for a long time. I went gluten free while I was pregnant with my 18 year old daughter, you know, and obviously this is something gluten free wasn't really around 19 years ago. Um, but it's made all the difference to me for so long. I've been going through this and obviously it makes sense. I was pregnant with her, my <laughs> little empath child, <laughs> but, um, but one other thing I've been guided to talk about is it's hard sometimes when you're awakening and your family and friends and loved ones around you aren't, you know, how do you, it's, it's sometimes really challenging when you're wanting to make these changes in your life, but your partner or your, you know, family, are you know, still stuck in the old 3D world. <laughs> Have you experienced that, Melissa? It's like I feel like I'm dragging people all the time and then I just drop them and it's like, okay, you. <laughs> yeah, but that's where compassion comes in as well because uh, you realise that people are where they are. We can't mm. force them. We can't change their soul path, you know. Well, that's what I was told anyway. It's like, oh, but, that's, um, well, that's yeah. where you and I are so different because I'm an earth angel. I just want to like. <laughs> no, I you... was like that. I was like that. And then it was like, are you helping or hindering them? They've got their own soul path. So, you know, you've really got to allow that and understand that, um, you know, I look, you know, I, I see it in some people. They become so jaded by it and they just can't believe it. And they, they begin to actually lower their vibration by actually being annoyed with, with those that aren't awake rather, you know, so it drops their vibration down and they just back to where they started from really. But this incident, oh, and it's not the weight of the world is not on their shoulders. It is not on our shoulders. We have rights and we have responsibilities as humans and as spiritual beings. But it is not like it's not our responsibility. We can guide, we can suggest, and we can lead the way by you know by our own example, and that maybe is better in a lot of instances. But you know, just to uh, like, it's just like okay, that's where that person's at at that time. There's nothing I can do. If they were going to be hit by a bus or a truck, I might actually just pull them out of the way there. But or I might say something. But I have learned just to be available, like to speak, you know, as a I friend know. or something like that as well. But, but on uh, a yeah, human level, <laughs> even like, but with children, like I completely get it. But I just, I just know that um, for some people listening to this show today who have, you know, children or teenagers who they're still, you know, they're still under the care of them, and that's different. You know, they're trying to get their children well in whatever way, and they're not wanting to do this themselves. It, it. I'm just wanting to like, you know bring that up that it is it is hard sometimes yes. when you're trying to tell your children to eat this or not eat that or do this or don't hang out with those people because it's coming home mm. and impacting the whole family so i just wanted to bring that up today yeah. just to well yeah but they're, but they're they're children we're still responsible for them like we're responsible for children yeah but and i'm just i would just wanted so that's to a little say bit different. i guess yeah, it's like, it's like, the yeah. challenges, the challenges. Think, it was just one of those things that I just wanted to. Listen, we all know what teenagers are like. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've experienced that, the long nights. <laughs> uh, look, all I can say is that, um, you know, it does resolve. They have to learn, but it, <laughs> it, does, yeah, resolve. it does resolve. Yeah, they, yeah, they have to learn but they, and their safety is well there and, and yeah. that. But leaving that communication open, I remember – Actually, I do remember um, seeking some guidance and, and what was said to me was, um, actually, you've got to find something in common. You've got to find something in common. And so we ended up watching <laughs> every Saturday, we watched on Foxtel The Hills. And I don't know if you remember this show or anything, <laughs> but I ended up loving, loving The Hills because it actually gave me time. And uh, with her, uh, we weren't talking or anything, but what it did was it just gave us that time and it really helped to repair um, so we were just watching. That was what we were talking about in common. We weren't talking about anything else, but it really made such a difference just to have some commonality, not to try and change it or anything like that, but just that's what she wants to do. Can I cope with that? And yeah, I did. <laughs> I still love it. I think it's just come Good back advice. on. Good advice. It was Kardashians in my house, but you know. <laughs> Was, and these are the things, you know, we confidence. just do our best as humans, you yeah, know, we've got, to have know. The, we've got to have something in common with them. And, and it's actually about the connection, you know, the connection is really important. <laughs> it's like, 
because nothing else was working. She was like a typical, you know, she was a typical, um, you know, what, what would you call her? I don't know, maybe a crystal kid or something like that. She just wasn't having a bar rebellious. of anything. That any or, and she was very rebellious, very single-minded, but a fant- independent, yeah. fantastic, independent woman and advocate. She's of service to so many people. She helps so many people just in her job and the way that she is as a friend. And she's learned, you know, to also look after herself. I cannot complain. Like yeah. that, just just a wonderful girl. But yeah, did that. <laughs> Yeah, there's a difference between Perfect. children and adults and, you know. Yeah. I just wanted to acknowledge that it's not always easy to yeah. um, when when you're learning things or because, you know, you're at a different level of your awakening and age and maturity and all those kind of things. But, you you know, you've got people around you who, are, who aren't that, there yet. That's there's, all. There's people that fell away. Like there's people that I just don't see and it just doesn't even enter into the, you know, my realm of consciousness or anything like yeah. that. But there, there is that, but you know, it's like they're on their path and, and that, but yeah. How, how did you go with like relationships and things like that? Same? Yeah, yeah. no, like there's, the, it is the same. And you know, as my, my, my energy and frequency changed, my interests, you know, I stopped drinking a long time ago and I stopped like doing those kind of things, you know, it's, I, I do. There's not. There's people that I'm, I'm. I'm not as close to anymore. I don't see. It's just that natural frequency and law of attraction that you know. You just kind of grow apart. I, not that I don't still love them and care about them or wish them well. It's just. It's just, just different. It's change. not. Yeah. And it's not um, raising our vibration too. This is one thing that my guides really want people to understand. When we raise our vibration, it's not that we're above others oh, because exactly. we're all equal, yeah. you know. Yeah. And it's just that people are on their path, you know, and and they see that um, they see that people get, um, you know, they get concerned and and they really they get so jaded by the fact that people aren't raising their vibrations and maybe they should be. And, you know, and that's what the spirit realms want them to understand. Like the responsibility is not on us. We can lead by example, but we, you know, but let's, let's not, oh, let's absolutely. not just, you know, we're give up. all, we're all on our own unique journey yeah. and, yeah. and that's it. Like, and that's, yeah. that's brilliant. Yeah. All right. So, so is there anything else or would you like to wrap this up soon? So we've, um, yeah, so we, we've done, I think we've done pretty well and we've covered a bit. We're going to be talking a lot more about this as well, mm. um, you know, because some of the things that Alison talks about, I've, she, Alison puts things into, she gives me the human terms for what I see. So <laughs> I'm hoping to expand on that a little bit more um, so that people can understand like how we see um, and um, there's things, there's ways that Alison perceives things and there's way that I perceive things and they are very, very interesting, like very interesting indeed. So, but um, yeah. We only is, see through our own filter, you know, it's yeah. our own filter. So Yeah, and it's our experiences. So we're, we're really hoping that you'll, you'll continue to join us. We've got lots of beautiful beautiful messages from all over the world so far because you know we've what this is coming into episode eight but um yeah with the podcast channel and um and coming up on youtube as well and on our own websites and through facebook as well so you know we're really hopeful just to continue um developing the relationship with you and to growing and to helping you along your spiritual journey and your connection to because it's within so as above as within so there we are. Oh, so that's beautiful. Yep. So until next week, Alison. Have a beautiful week. And yeah, I look forward to chatting and seeing you all next week. Yes, I do too. <laughs> bye now. Okay. Bye. 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 Thanks for tuning into this week's episode of Sacred Sessions. Your comments, questions and topic suggestions are welcome. So connect with us on Facebook and Instagram and through our websites. Naturally, all links are in the show notes.